Welcome back to Vandemic Camper Vans. I'm Rick. I am here today with a brand new video. This is not a typical van build. This is actually a podcast I was invited to be on with my friend Chris Bello. Super excited to share this with you. Do us a favor, give us a thumbs up, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, and drop a comment below about what you got the most out of this actual podcast. Looking forward to hearing the feedback, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bello. Today, I've got my friend, Rick Doherty. Doherty. Dang it. I've like practiced it a few times. I was like, Doherty, Doherty. Oh, you told me all the ways not to say it. And now I'm thinking of those names. But Rick Doherty, is that sort of correct? Nailed it. Awesome. With Vandemic Camper Vans. And we talked about this. We actually met at like a guy's night dinner that was set up with some mutual friends. And you're, you've got real estate experience, you've got a camper van business, conversion van business, and I'd love to just dive into your story, how that's going, challenges that you're running into, where you're going next, and the whole nine yards. So I guess before we get started, let tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, I have your bio here, but if you want to give us a little rundown of how did you sure. even end up doing what you're doing now? Like, who is Rick? That's a great question. I think... Uh... That that unfolds every day, honestly, which is great. Um, you get to but, unfold the story a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, ever growing. So hopefully everybody's ever growing. Um, yeah, I mean, I think um, I've always to kind of bring it back to when I was younger. I um, a lot of things came naturally, easy. Like I was, uh, you know, I, I excelled in sports, and school was easy up until end of high school, and then. Uh, I really didn't want to go to college, to be honest with you. The only reason I did is I ended up going to uh, to school um, after high school. I went to college and, uh, and I, I wanted to play basketball. So that's what I was there for, strictly basketball and uh, and probably to have too much fun. So school was not anything I was super interested in. Um, I never really believed in the school system, always wanted to, wasn't sure what I wanted to do back then, but I knew that the idea of going through all that just to go sit at a desk day job wasn't something that I was really like excited for. Um, at the same time, there was a piece of me that really wanted that to kind of fill this idea or picture for, for people that knew me that, oh, okay, he's actually doing pretty well, or, you know, I'm living up to some somebody else's standards or whatever, rather than my own. So mm -hmm. school just wasn't for me. I bounced around from colleges, never actually graduated and uh, kind of set out in my twenties. I, I was nicknamed uh, gypsy by my friends because I, <laughs> I kind of bounced around and just uh, like, I moved every couple of years. So I uh, grew up in upstate New York, uh, near Rochester, New York. And, uh, Spent a little time outside of Philadelphia. My parents had moved down there after I graduated high school. Spent a little bit of time there. Eventually, I, I moved down to Atlanta, Georgia, uh, in my early 20s, which was an awesome time. And um, moved down there with a couple buddies. Had this like grand idea that like I would get into real estate. And it just never... One, I... I didn't follow through on anything. Uh, that was kind of like the story of my life in my twenties. And, um, but I had this idea of real estate was the, was the answer and, uh, met a girl there, ended up moving out to Los Angeles, California with her, uh, was out there for almost three years. I ended up moving back to Atlanta for another couple of years and then, uh, eventually moved back up to Rochester for another girl that I've known forever. And, uh, we've since, our life partners now, which is awesome. Um, and it wasn't until moving back to Rochester that I, you know, I was in my early thirties and had, you know, Corey, my partner, she, she really kind of helped ground me in a way, um, and kind of had the confidence and just was like the encouragement to just go for stuff. Like, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Um, and this is coming from somebody, Corey's got cystic fibrosis, which is, it's a genetic disease. Um, uh, it's, it's a not so pretty disease at all. Uh, there's definitely been a lot of advancements, uh, the past, you know, there's always advancements going on in the medical field, but it's something where, you know, death was always staring 
at her in the face since she was since she was born basically um she was told she wouldn't be live past four then it wasn't you know she wouldn't live past 12 or out of, get out of high school or college you know we're both 43 now and you know she's in theory beat the odds at every step of the way and it's like how do you live fully into each day and she really i was able to see that firsthand and mm -hmm. you know I, I feel like i had an edge up on feeling into that like what would it look like if we weren't around tomorrow? What would we do today? Like that's, I know that's kind of cliche in a lot of the stuff, you know, the entrepreneurial world, but like for years, for 30 plus years, that's what she lived with is like, how do I, you know, I may not have tomorrow. We just may not have it. So long winded, um, our relationship and she, she had done a lot of personal work at a, um, a retreat center down in uh, downstate New York in the Catskill Mountains. And um, it, eventually I found myself going there as, as well. And I still go there and actually leading retreats now, which is something actually new, which is exciting. But um, that, like the personal development of kind of going inside in that type of work really actually helped give me the personal confidence to move forward. And so like after my first ever retreat, which was in October of 2010, within 30 days, I wholesaled my first ever house. Wow. And um, I had no idea what the hell I was doing. I had no money at the time. Like I was dead broke. I literally, I had 50 bucks. So this is a, this is a completely true story. Like I had $50 to my name that I felt like I could spare, but like I was at a point where I was in banking Again, I had that good job. I was miserable underneath. Like it was just a mask. I liked the prestige that that came with it and what it looked like to the outside world of what I was doing. But like deep down, it just wasn't what I wanted to do. But yeah, so I had fifty dollars to my name, and so I bought. I could afford nine bandit signs, a sharpie, <laughs> uh, a little track phone. This you know back in the day, and I was able to buy like fifty minutes. Um, and so I put out nine bandit signs, uh, and within 30 days I was, I was able to, you know, I wrapped up a deal and I made a thousand dollars on that first wholesale deal, wow. which isn't a lot of money like right now at but the time. But it's still at the time. That literally, it, it changed my life. For someone who had $50. So <laughs> yeah. It was like, it's in, yeah, I mean, it was humbling, I guess, to kind of relive that, but uh, like that's the that's the actual reality. Uh, but like that thousand dollars was like it felt like a million dollars to me, um, and it gave me the green light and of yeah, like this is possible. Like this is actually, you know, spent countless years on YouTube or reading books and like seeing other people do this and hearing about everybody else's success. Um, but to to be able to complete a deal from A to Z. And the, I think part of the best, the best part about the story is, is uh, the deal originally originated on a little napkin. So <laughs> I can't remember if it was on YouTube or over a book I was reading that was like, oh yeah, you don't even need an actual con. You just need, a, you need something signed on a piece of paper. And so <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. So I literally got the homeowner, it was, it was a, an estate sale is what it was. So the family literally we did, and it was a little party napkin. It wasn't even like a big <laughs> paper towel. It was a little party napkin. Nice. Got everything signed. And the deal was for like $16,000. That's it. The Rochester's a, a very kind of depressed market for the most part. And um, I brought it to an attorney that was recommended to me who does a lot of the investor deals. And he is like, I didn't know who he did, we didn't know each other at all. And so I, I walked into the office and I'm like, all right, I got a deal. What do I do? And he's like, what the hell is this? He's like, <laughs> it's a what am I going to do with a napkin? <laughs> um, so he gave me an official contract, you know, a real estate sales contract and uh, started my, my wholesaling career then. Um, so yeah, it was a, a long winding road just to at least take the initial first step and like thinking back, it's just like, I want to kick myself because I waited like literally 10 years to actually take any action. Um, and yeah, if I could go back and do anything differently, it would be just to take the first step 10 years earlier and, uh, and get started. Yeah. You're going to fumble. You know, I, I, I stumbled. It took me a while to do my next deal after that, but I knew it could be done. Right. Right. Yeah. Belief is the first step for sure. And 
I know I hear that quote, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today or like now, Correct, yeah. because yeah. yeah, hindsight's 2020. Obviously <clears throat> we all wish we could have gone back and invested in like all these tech companies before they became who they are, but none of us has the crystal ball to know yeah. exactly what that, what that's yeah. going to be. So I think that's a very powerful story of just kind of following your path. I know we had a lot of things in common when we met up recently for coffee of like, yeah, just like committing to a place and settling down and just picking something and doing it. Cause, cause even I struggle with that now. It's just, ah, that sounds awesome. That shiny object over there looks interesting. Like, ah, I'm kind of tired of real estate. Should I switch? Although I'm getting momentum here. Like, yep. do I commit? Is this my real passion? So I think it's important for the listeners just to realize that we all kind of go through this of false starts. Ed Milet is a mentor of mine who talks a lot about we have false start after false start. You think mm. you made it. You think you figured it out. Now you got other challenges. That next deal is not as easy to find or whatever, you know. And it's just yeah. part of the journey because everything we learn stacks upon itself and you can apply what you learned from real estate into your current business. And then whatever you're doing in the future, if that ever should change, you're you're not going into it with a completely fresh start. You have the culmination of all the experiences that you've gathered over your lifetime. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's so, so true. And, and, and I still struggle from, I'm better now with the shiny object syndrome, but like I still... I'm not as focused as I could be, um, for sure. Even even now, I'm ten years into you know this this whole other entrepreneurial journey, and uh, you know I've dabbled in a lot of different things over the years. You know, crypto, and I had an Amazon, uh, like I paid for like an Amazon drop shipping store that did well for a few years, and then it just kind of fell off the face of the earth in a, in a way. <laughs> but I feel like. You know, it, it the, those they're distractions, right? At the end of the day, I, I would consider a lot of those to be minor wins, but it, like in the in the macro, like they're they're distractions in so many ways, and like that's another piece of if I could even going back into real estate. I mean, I'm I'm still in real estate, so I've got a bunch of commercial real estate. We actually, um, my partner from back east that I still have a bunch of commercial real estate with. We actually just closed on. Um, a bigger deal is a big student housing um, deal the last week of uh, 20, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So it was an 80, an 80 bed student housing project. Ironically, in the town that I went to my first college at, which is kind of crazy. Wow. Uh, it's a small little town. Like this, there's two schools, there's two small little state schools that each have maybe like 25, 2,600 students super small. So there's only about 5,000, I think, students between the two schools, or at least there was at the time, you know, pick a lane and, and stay in it until you get really good with it. Like, I mean, I, yeah. I come I get a, a lot of, not as much anymore, just because I'm removed from the Rochester market a little bit, but uh, I'm in Denver now and um, not as involved in real estate here as I, as I am back East. But, um, you know, I get a lot of people that still kind of reach out and, you know, from some mentorship or whatever. And like, if I could give any advice to anybody, it's just, you know, real estate specific is if, you know, pick one thing, get really good at it, right? So if it's wholesaling, put your head down, learn everything you need or can and stay with that because I think within a year's time, you can literally dominate up any particular market if you just put your time and effort into one thing you know, the shiny objects are going to be in real estate, you've got, you know, flipping, you've got some buy and holds or whatever, you know, other thing. I think all that can come. But if you, if, my recommendation would be is if you can get great at one thing, you're going to set yourself up, you're going to be so much further ahead of everybody else around you for the most part. The rest of the stuff will come easy at that point. One, because you're gonna have a bunch of capital to work with. Uh, and two, the bigger piece of that is going to be just the relationships that have been created. Mm -hmm. That opens so many more doors. And that's, you know, I've been fortunate enough to, um, you know, the, my, my partner back East, we, we started uh, after I did that first wholesale deal, we were working at the, the same bank together, both super green and real estate, but eventually turned it into what we have today. And um, we, we followed through on what we said we were going to do. Like we committed to something. Yep. Sometimes it wasn't even the best deal, but we, we can, we followed through, we would close on it. Um, and you build up your reputation that way. People started bringing us deals uh, where we didn't even have to market for a few years, which is kind of wild thinking back to, 
Um, but relationships are huge and it's everything in, in, in all of this and in, in, in everything yeah. that I've done so far. So, yeah, relationships are huge for sure. And that's one thing, like the, the leads that you can get from there, the deals, just the best types of deals will come straight to you without even having to go on the market or being shopped around, whether it's real estate or any other industry, because you have that relationship, the trust is there. You still took down those deals, even though you're like, ah, I don't know if some of these deals aren't as great as we thought. But whenever you actually follow through and closed and did what you said you were going to do, that's almost like um, I've done a few recent deals where the commission was just like a couple hundred bucks. I'm like, man, is this even worth my time? Why am I doing this? But it was almost like just doing it to help them out now, because I know that's going to open the floodgates for the future deals and seeing the macro. I think you mentioned that word earlier, not just looking at the micro, but the macro picture this lead source of mine who sent me that referral has already sent me several deals, probably close to nine or 10 actual transactions that have closed. So it's a no brainer to say, yes, let me help this client. I can't just be, you know, cherry picking leads and deals. I want to be very helpful to him and all of his clients so that he can continue to refer more business to me in the future. So relationships are huge. And sometimes you're not always going to win. You know, it can't always be win-win. You're not always going to make the big bucks. You got to do some of the small things too. It's like scratch my back, I scratch yours type thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I think that, yeah, there's always, there's not always a million dollars at the back end of, of, of every relationship, but, but there can be, I mean, I've got a good story for that too. I mean, we got into a self-storage facility. So I've got four or five storage facilities right now. Um, and we've kind of packaged them together and threw them out. I think I shared that with you. Um, yeah. So that, you know, one of those, one of the facilities in there was strictly relationship provided where it was a, it was a crazy deal. Like thinking back, like it was, it's a 320 unit facility that was up and running. It was just not even mismanaged. It was just, it was a uh, mom and pop ready to sell, <clears throat> excuse me. And um it was under contract with another investor that I actually know um, they couldn't close on it. And so the person that brought it to them knew us uh, as well. And, um, you know, he called us up and like within, we had like 24 hours to decide, but like, you know, I can't remember that. I think it was 975. So it was $975,000 is what like the deal was. It was, it was under a million dollars, solid property. There's not much we had to do is just, I mean, it, you know, we put a, a better facilitator in place on site. Um, and this was what, four or five years ago. It's part of this package, but like, I mean, right now that property is being marketed and there's, there's a couple offers on the table, but that property is a $3 million property now just wow. for being managed better. And for, again, the past of following through and, and developing relationships, we would have never, I would have never even known about that. Right. Um, right. And so there's a two million dollar windfall on the back end of that that we haven't added anything additional to the property. It's just better managed, rents are up. Um and it's a well oiled machine. But but again, that that can't that was that'll be like the the biggest, at least to date right now, that'll be like the biggest kind of you know, like you talked about scratching each other's backs, you do good for somebody else, they'll scratch your back and provide something that that's a great story of like, wow, that's a a couple million dollar profit on the back end. That's amazing. Cool. Absolutely. And I think that kind of shows the power of playing the long game and just being consistent over time. Because if you didn't do a great job, or you had a bad reputation, or someone thought of you, and then they're like, Oh, those people didn't close that other deal I sent them and they went to someone else you might not even have known about that opportunity at all. And, you know, ignorance is bliss sometimes. So maybe if you didn't know about it, it wouldn't have hurt. But at the same time, now, you know, the power of that. And it looks like my cat has emerged from the couch. I'm going to throw her out real quick before she jumps up here. One second. All right. My bad. (laughs) Uh, No worries at all. Totally get it. So the power of consistency, man, that's one thing is just showing up. And I, I personally have to remind myself about this because oftentimes I get very into that go-giver mindset and then I'm like, man, I'm, I'm giving and giving and I've given, you know, I've given so much time and effort and energy and tips and hacks to people who ask for my time, oftentimes for free, 
when am I going to get, when is it going to come back? When am I going to get that referral? When am I going to land that client? You know, but we can't give with the intention of getting. So that's kind of the catch 22 is like, you have to give in order to get, but it's got to be actually pure from the heart. And cause people could tell if you're just trying to do something real yeah. quick to get something back, you know? Yeah. I think, I think everybody wears it on their face. Like it's hard, it's hard to mask that. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's, there's a handful yeah. of people that are, that are pretty good at that, but but for the most part, I I, I agree. I Just agree the with vibe you check, you know, you can tell real yeah. quick. I'm like, man, this guy, I've got one guy I'm thinking of and he just, he's always asking every time it's a DM, <laughs> it's like he's pitching me on something or he wants a referral or, you know, wants an introduction. And I'm like, man, this guy hasn't really asked how he can help me at all. He's always yeah. just asking how I can help him where it's almost like the boy who cried wolf. You know, anytime I see a message from him, I'm like, ah, I'm not really excited to open that one because I know what it's going to be. Yeah, and, that's tough. And you don't want to be that person. If you're that person who's always helpful in adding value, you're going to be that person that people want to reach out to whenever, you know, they have that thing or they've got a referral or something, they know you'll take good care of it. Absolutely. I think that makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah. And so of course I got that vibe with you when we met, when I'm like, ah, oh, like traveling and you love, you know, moving around and real estate. And now you've got the bigger vision too, which is the camper vans and what you guys are working on and like the branding and stuff. So we could talk a little bit about that if you don't mind. I'd love to sure. hear what you're up to. How did you come across this idea, this business model? Were you interested yeah. in it? Like <laughs> how did that even begin? I, I started in 2020, didn't it? Yeah, we so so yeah, the camper van started in 2020. So so my brother and I, uh, so we're we're 50 50 in this, and uh, and Corey helps out. Um, she's starting to help out a lot more with some some pieces that we're adding. So we're she's she's working on a blog piece, and um, you know I had to reach out to you a couple a few weeks ago now about like adding podcast. a podcast piece on on yeah. van life. Um, but yeah, where it originated was um, so Dennis, my brother, he's kind of lived the whole van you know, nomadic lifestyle for, for a while. He, uh, was living out of his Toyota Tacoma uh, by choice for, I don't remember, like a year and a half or whatever. Uh, this was probably back in 2018 into 19. Corey and I took a, our first ever van trip in 2019. And so that, you know, we had, we had like the lead up to that was we got sucked into a, we followed sucked into the, the old rabbit hole of of YouTube. Oh yeah, uh, van life, and so we were just like I don't know. I love we you know, both of us love the idea of of just like the freedom of you know waking up where you want when you want. We like camping, but like the idea of van life was you've got a roof over your head, you've got a fridge, you've got power, you've got a comfy bed, you've got all the amenities of like maybe a studio apartment on the road. And you're compact enough where you're not limited to where you can go. You can you can go to all the national parks. Mm -hmm. um, so we we had been following a couple other couples online that were uh, one in particular that was working their way down from uh, they were down in South America, but they they had started in Canada and were just on this open ended quest of travel and they were documenting the whole thing and we just you know that was our our weekly TV show that we were watching, mm -hmm. uh, fell in love with them and like the idea. And we're like, well, shit, we need to, we need to try this. So we, yeah. we rented a van for our first, our first trip. And we ended up taking a decent sized trip. It was a 16 day trip. We left from Denver and worked our way West, um, like to Napa, San Francisco, uh, down to big Sur, big bear, uh, or not big bear. I'm sorry. Um, Yosemite, Tahoe, we hit a bunch of places, the salt flats in, in uh, Utah. And Very it was, cool. uh, it was just awesome. So we had our dog with us and it was just, it was just amazing. Like, I'm like, yeah, I could totally. <laughs> so like, I mean, and you're making me want to go on one of these. I'm like, dude, I haven't done this yet. I need to. It's just, I mean, in, 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 in today's world, I mean, there's so many people now because of COVID, a lot of people are just being like, they're able to work from the road. Like the, yeah from a work. business standpoint it's been it's been great but that was really kind of the introduction like dennis dennis this was at the beginning of covid like um when it first the beginning of 2020 dennis was still in his tacoma and we were just like dude why don't you just look into getting a van like i mean yeah. he's my height like he's six <laughs> one like he's like yeah i mean it's a little cramped in here and yeah so, no kidding you know, so he eventually he did get a van he bought it in Alabama. Our parents live in Florida. So he was on his way to, uh, to Florida. Uh, him and my father, our father built it out 
uh, that first one. And like, while he was gone, we had talked about starting, well, this is something, what the heck are we going to do in the pandemic? Like the world shut down, like let's build vans. So we, like when he was out building that out, I was looking for shop space and, you know, he got back. Uh, we kind of hit the ground running. We found a used van in July of 2020 and it took a while for that first one to like, we were just figuring out layout and like, you know, you've got a real estate background. So, and most, a lot of people will understand, you know, like a kitchen is nice and square, like this box we're in. So hanging cabinets up here is very simple in a van. There's nothing square. Everything's rounded. Oh yeah. There's weird angles. So like, it took a while to figure it out and uh, took four months to finish that first one, but also with COVID was supply chain issues. And so it, it was just an interesting kind of mix. It, you know, long story short is that first van sold in November of 2020. Um, and just that first van created all of 2021's business for us. Like we had, we had client builds lined up for all of 21, which was awesome. And then, you know, the market keeps shifting as far as like demand, the demand was so high for the vans themselves is that, yeah. you know, normally we're used to just going to a, a dealership and walking or driving off the dealership with a vehicle. Like they don't carry vans anymore. Like you have to actually order it. So now it's a six month process wow. and all that. So like it's ever changing right now with, with what we're doing. Um, it's a combination of client builds, but we also, we, we offer two layouts just to, keep our own sanity and be able to keep on some type of timeline. Yep. Um, so we've, you know, my father-in-law is, runs a dealership in Missouri. So that's where we get, we actually buy a, quite a few vans, just build them out and then throw them up for sale. Uh, and then <clears throat> we're able to sprinkle in some client builds along the way, but it's such a great community and I'll always do real estate um, in any, in various different forms or whatever. I mean, I've got a couple of 1031. So like, I mean, I've kind of married into a couple of my partners at this point of we'll, we'll have to continue to do that. So, and that'll be in the bigger commercial stuff. Um, Vans has been interesting in like, like the community itself. So like real estate, the community is more so like the community of investors, which is great. Like, like somebody like you and like how we were introduced as like, that's right. a cool piece of it. This is a different aspect in <clears throat> the actual client. And yeah, our experience has just been pretty awesome. Is like the actual community, like people actually on the road. And even like we go to a bunch of van shows, for, like trade shows or whatever, all the vendors, like everybody's just, it's a pretty welcoming community. It's just, it's hard to put And I'm trying to think of something to compare it to, but it's just, it's a great community. Like talking, you, you mentioned earlier, like a people scratching each other's backs, like that, that's a, this is a perfect example in this community where everybody's friendly, you know, like hearing people that we, you know, clients that we have that are on the road that they just link up with people along the way and end up traveling together. And that's it's cool. just like, that's freaking awesome. Like, I think that's what, that's what it's all about. Right. Like that's, it's yeah. just community having a good time doing what you want and you know there's there's people that are working from the road which is cool they're starting their own business on the road like there's just so much opportunity out there um and i think that's what like kind of lights me up about this and it's not just van life but like in general it's just like what wakes you up in the morning to go like just go for it and like there's um it's interesting like there's a part of me that like I'm eating my own words because where am I? I'm sitting in my office right now. We're building out vans. I'm not out on the road living life. So like <laughs> we're working towards figuring out how to do that. And like part of an idea I had was to have a podcast from the road, like in a van and just interviewing cool. other people that are living on the road or other vendors. And I don't know, that's like the grander picture. And, um, but again, you know, kind of how you and I spoke a few weeks ago is like just baby steps of just starting. All right. It comes back yeah. to the basics of ideas are great, but like ideas are nothing but something on a piece of paper until they're put into action. So it's, right. it's, it's right. taking the necessary steps, steps to get there. Yeah. And just starting off small, starting where you're at, I'm realizing more and more that 
You don't have to have some grand plan and amazing 20 page business plan. Just like most, most people just get started. They do their first deal on a real estate napkin type thing. And you learn along the way. And then you had the template to do that next deal on the proper documentation or like a legit real estate contract, you know? So same thing with the vans, like you're going to continue to grow and interview amazing people and learn from other vendors that maybe you like meet a Swedish van manufacturer or something, and they don't care about sharing you know, competitive secrets because you're not really mm-hmm. in the same markets anyway, but they're just like traveling here to see if they can get new business. You know how it works where people are very collaborative and it's not quite as competitive as you would think sometimes. Like you just mentioned the, yeah. the community is amazing. I noticed that with the entrepreneur community, the folks that I've been friends yeah. with, they're not afraid to hide any uh, secrets. They'll tell me exactly the right steps, exactly the scripts that I need to use, the exact tools. There's, there's not like they're trying to pull the wool over my eyes and be like, no, nah, that's too, that's too good. I'm not going to tell Chris that, you know? Yeah. So as we continue to take action on that, I think um, we're just going to refine our crafts and continue to grow the business. Like, I think you guys are building a really cool movement and like a, a brand and you're, you're looking to the podcast to embody that and interview people from the van on the road. Like, I just love the vision you have for it. But like you just said, you know, it's about the execution now. So now yeah. maybe planning yeah. that trip and let's do three episodes from this location with like the backdrop being the ocean or whatever. So turning that into reality would be like the next, you know, step for you guys for sure. And I'm excited yeah. to follow that journey. Yeah, super. I mean, it's exciting. Like, I mean, I, I like I'm scared to do it. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, it feels like a big undertaking, especially with everything that we have going on here. But right. But but it feels important to do. And I think you just touched on something um, that resonates really deeply within me is, is the, the piece around like not, sh- you know, the entrepreneurial c- community share, like they're not, nobody's afraid to share with how to, how to get to someplace or the, like, how to take the next step or whatever. Here's some, here's a tool that I'm using that works for me. Maybe not everybody knows about it, but maybe implement this or something. Right. I remember in the beginning of my real estate journey, I did. I was pretty, I kept everything in. Like I, I didn't, I didn't fully understand that there's so much abundance of all of this that we're doing. Like in real estate was wholesale, you know, wholesaling deals at first and then, and then flipping houses. It's like, it it can be competitive at the same time, but there's so much out there. Like there's never a shortage of quote unquote deals. Like there's always stuff going on. And like, you know, part of the idea with a podcast with, with here is like somebody, a, a, a subset group that I want to interview are, is other builders. And I've had a couple of people like, well, why would you want to do that? Aren't you just going to shine light on? I'm like, yeah, but like, it actually opens up the door for it. It shows I'm completely transparent. Like I'm not afraid to bring your competitors bring somebody and like that. Yeah. Put I, them I don't in the look spotlight. Fully competitors. Cause we're all completely different. And right, right. at the end of the day, Plus the selfishly, cool, you can yeah, learn a hundred percent. Exactly. And that's, and that's, it's going to do nothing but better me um, and yep. my brother here. Like, yeah. I mean, we don't know everything. There's always new technology coming out. Like if we're not learning, we're not necessarily growing. So I just feel like it's a, it's an opportunity to, you know, it, it the whole idea too, is just to bring more people together and, and it's, open up the door. Two years ago, van life was pretty taboo. I remember going back to, for a wedding uh, back to Rochester in uh, <laughs> 21. And everybody knows me knows me back there as like, oh, the real estate guy, Rick. And like, <laughs> what the hell are you? Like, they, they, they didn't understand what it Why was. Why did you do like, vans? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, well, they didn't understand it. It's like, it's the whole Chris Farley bit of like living in a van down by the river. I'm like, yeah, kind of is in a way. It's actually pretty <laughs> awesome though. Yeah. Um, so now everybody kind of gets it. Like it's, it's, it's just different, man. It's, it's a different type of movement. Um, but like, I don't know, I've always kind of been super optimistic about the world and, and uh, I'm somebody who that, you know, I'll, I'll throw that out. If anybody knows me and I ever have tunnel vision on and only looking through the, the that type of lens, feel free to smack me and like remind me of who <laughs> I am. Like, I don't know, the world's a big place. There's so much to see and do out there. And yeah, I think so many of us get caught in the day to day and forget to look up while we're doing it. So 
Yeah, I, I agree 100%. And a lot of people forget, you know, to stop and smell the roses, as they yeah. say, and life passes you by very quickly if you don't take a moment to do that. So the fact that you guys are leaning into what you love and you're passionate about it, the community, uh, I'm excited for you. And it's making me be like, man, what can my thing be? I just literally recorded an episode about this. Like I need, I'm thinking about a brand and a movement and how do I have something so cool? People wear my logo on their merch. Mm -hmm because they can agree and back the movement that whatever it is that I end up standing for. Cause right now it's like, I'm kind of the real estate guy. I'm the automation dude. I know how to put some systems together, but what yeah. does that really mean? And is that important enough to somebody like van life? I would imagine that you have such raving fans and customers that like, they're all about it. Van life is all they do. They're completely mobile off the grid, you know, re renewable resources, like growing food yeah. and things like that. I can imagine all of that happening within that community. So once you're bought in, you're like all the way in and that's the power of creating what you guys are creating. Uh, so just wanted to share that, even though you're like, I don't really know what we're doing. I'm a little bit nervous about that <laughs> next step. I'm like, I'm looking to you as you've got a little bit more together than I feel like I do. So we can all inspire each other. Your yeah. journey, man, it's just really cool to see from, from the real estate to finding you know, the girl, you moved back yeah. for the girl. You guys are now life partners following the little breadcrumbs, you know, that little breadcrumb trail. It can lead you to some really cool places if you just listen to that voice. Absolutely, man. I think you summed it up perfectly right there. So true. So true. Yeah. And you can only connect the dots looking backwards because I mean, if people looked at your life, like what are, what are you doing? You're moving all over the place. You're not going to have a stable career. How are you going to grow in a certain area if you're just moving all over the country? But now you can look back and be like, well, cool. That's where I bet that partner. We're doing real estate deals. I still have friends there. I have a community there, but now we live in Denver you know, so you can create the life that you want. I think that's another important takeaway, especially in this kind of global interconnected world. You're not limited yeah. at all. You don't have to stay. If you're not, if you're not happy with where you live, move, you know, follow your heart type thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think another piece to that too, is like, I know it's something that I struggled with is like age, right. Is, is, you know, I'll be 44 actually in a few weeks. And that's weird for, for Happy me to early say. birthday. <laughs> like, thank you. I feel like I'm still a kid in a lot of ways. And I hope I always feel that way. But like, I think, um, and this is just my own like upbringing and like in, in like the beginning pieces of, of businesses, like thinking people were dinosaurs and like irrelevant, which is so such a terrible way to think because like, I think it's all tied together. Like we're, it doesn't matter how old you are, you know, you can, you know, yeah. the story of, I think it's what Ray Kroc didn't start McDonald's until he was like, what, 55 or something. And it's just like, yeah. And the KFC that... guy too, 60 something. Yeah. He was in his sixties and it's just like, yeah, just follow your dream and, or whatever, even if it's a dream or not, but like, don't think you're too old to start something. Uh, it may feel overwhelming. Like, yeah. We started this. Yeah, I was in my 40s starting the vans. It was something completely new. Like I had done real estate for a long time. Like that's all I did. Um, and this was something new and it felt really weird. It's still at times I'm like, <laughs> did we do the right thing here? Like, what but am like, I doing? Yeah. It's just another tool in the tool belt. And like, I mean, I'm growing as a, you know, as a person, as, as a business owner, um, and it does keep me young in some kind of ways of like, I like just being able to connect with people because we have clients from, you know, mid seventies, actually close to 80. And we've worked with somebody as young as their early twenties. And so like that, yeah. and, wow. and there's a connection, there's always a deep connection. Um, and a lot of these people will be lifelong connections, just, you know, just, they just will be, it's just the type of people mm -hmm. that are involved with this, which is great. And, you know, it, yeah, it's just so I, I that's something for me that like the age piece. I remember yeah, thinking on my I'm feeling weird about this. it. Yeah. yeah. And like I mean yeah. I'm growing out of that and this is like you know, you're still a young buck yourself there. So it's like, <laughs> well, this it's you know. all, I feel old. I'm like, Oh, I didn't make it quote unquote. Everyone's got those random goals for themselves, you know? So is my life over if I didn't have like a net worth of a million dollars by 30? Like, no, I'm, no. I'm still, I'm learning, I'm growing. I've developed some really amazing skills because I've got the friends who are 19 or 20 and they're making six figures, you know, 300, 400 yeah. grand a year at 19. And I was like, dude, 
I was going to college. I was playing video games. Like I had no goals at all. So I was a mess at 18. And 19, <laughs> like, I'm like, dude, these 18 year olds, like, yeah, they're built different. I mean, some of them, a lot of them are still yeah. playing Fortnite in the mom's basement type thing. But a lot of people who are driven and motivated, like the information is out there. If we're just willing to execute on it and most importantly, try to ignore all the shiny objects out there, that's yeah. the hardest part we can do some really cool things. And I mean, I'm just getting ideas. I'm like, man, you guys could build like a Facebook community and have the 70 year olds connect with the 20 year olds and yeah. then they could travel yeah, together. There's so many things you guys can do. Yeah, there is. I mean, meetups and I mean, yeah, we've got a lot of ideas, uh, but we're, we're trying to focus, focus on a couple yeah. things, you know, for, for this year is a blog and the podcast. So yeah, I feel like those, yeah. are, those are, those are big things. So Absolutely. And I know you, when we spoke uh, last, you said like the videos that you guys had initially made of the build outs and just giving some background about various ca camper vans that you were creating or uh, modifying. I'm not sure what the right converting is maybe the best word. <laughs> converting, yeah, whatever. I mean, there's Updating, no way to converting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're still kind of leading the way here in this industry. That's still relatively, like you said, I feel like it's still gaining steam and popularity because a lot yeah. of people are kind of like, what, what is that? Why are you doing that? And it's starting to make more sense, especially as more and more people go remote. But um, like the content creation, man, like that's something that I need to work on myself because as you continue, that ends up being shared. So people are sharing your videos and more and more people are learning about you. And it ends up being a really cool way of just generating inbound business and keeping sure. your pipeline full. So that's, that's another thing that I think content is going to continue to remain king for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta stay on top of that too. It's tough. Like we go in waves. I mean, it's it's another full time job. It feels like, and so that that's a, yeah. like the figuring yeah. out of to have it not feel that way. Um, we're we're that's a work in progress for us for sure because it's yeah. so valuable, right? I mean, anything can go viral these days, and like this is such a, a viral esque uh, industry. The the camper vans, like people, it's funny people like, just. So I was uh, real quick. So I, yesterday I actually drove speaking of another shiny object or <laughs> uh, is, so we brought, we bought a couple forerunners at the end of the last year, just for the, the vehicle tax write off. But I found a, a management company that will rent them out for us um, through Turo just cause it's just something else I did, you know, okay, we need a tax write off. Here's something on top of some of the real estate pieces. Like, so hopefully this will, help generate a, a zero tax bill this, for last year, which would be great. But um, I, I, this company has locations, you know, five or six locations. One of them's up in Provo in Utah. So I drove one of the forerunners to Provo yesterday and then grabbed an Uber from Provo up to Salt Lake. And so you just never know. So my Uber driver, um, you know, we super, super awesome guy. He, he's retired. Um, wanted like just happened to be he's like oh you know asking me what i was doing up there i'm like oh you know i delivered told him what was going on but i also build out camper van he's like really he's like i my wife and i have been talking about this so like for an <laughs> hour i got to talk to this guy and like he asked some really great questions and you just never know but like to ultimately where i'm going with this is like to see somebody light up talking about camper vans that's amazing it just puts a smile on my face because it's still kind of funny to me in some in some way of like thinking of the whole chris farley bit on saturday night live <laughs> Um, and this guy, I don't know exactly how old he is, but he's retired. He's probably, you know, sixties, maybe early seventies. I don't know. Um, but to see him light up, like, you know, a little kid is just like, so what would I want? What, what would your recommendation be if like, I still wanted to do this, like he's a big skier and he's just like, so how would I outfit it? It's just, you could see the wheels turning. Like he's actually put a lot of thought into it. He's imagining like, his camper van now. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. So it was a great, and, and it's a, that's a lead for us, honestly. I mean, it was a yeah. great, yeah, it was a great, uh, a great ride. It was, a, it was well worth a, the hour trip. And, um, but you just never know. But like just seeing how excited people are about this, and absolutely, yeah, it's just, it kind of keeps a smile on my face. Yeah. And I think it's important to continue to do those things and remind yourself of why you're doing what you're doing. So whenever you're having yeah. those days, it may even be helpful. I saw uh, a business that I look up to kind of had this wall, like customer hall of fame or customer success stories. 
And anytime they're feeling down or like upset or frustrated, they can look at that wall of five-star reviews and happy customers and smiling faces and, and all those different types of things. It's almost like a jar of happiness that you can refer to whenever you need a reminder of why you're doing what you're doing. Cause I mean, I, I sometimes just like, okay, whatever I did this deal, I got paid, but like, I just helped someone buy a house that their family is going to live in. Like, that's pretty amazing for them. I, it may be a little bit monotonous on my side now. Like, okay, checklist, talk to the title company, blah, blah, blah. All right. Closing. Send, it's like a series of checklists that I'm doing, right? Write a thank you card, send the letter. And they just moved into their dream home or their first home. So I've got to yeah. remind myself of like, this is very powerful. Um, I need to remember the work that I'm doing because I'm doing more than I'm giving myself credit for sometimes. Yeah, that's, I think um, Corey is great at this and like, you know, celebrating, celebrating yeah. a victory, yeah. like, and it can be something, it doesn't have to be anything huge, but like, you know, she, she's great at reminding us of like, when we do sell a van or whatever, like just to celebrate a second to, to drink. Yeah. And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like, let's go out for a dinner or whatever, but like, just acknowledge it like that. That's a big thing, right? Yeah, like it's, yeah. it's a progression. It's a, you know, you, it's another rung on the ladder of, of stepping forward, moving forward. Um, and I know I get so lost in the day to day. A lot of times, like she's, she's a great at grounding and remembering. And again, comes back to the beginning of all this of like, you know, she had to who be knows, right. Yeah. Who knows what tomorrow will bring. Right. So it's just like, we have today, we have this moment live into it. Even if you don't think it's that big of a deal, it's bigger than what it may, it, you know, it's bigger. The the whole totality of it underneath, it's like an iceberg, right? You can only see yep, so much yep. the underneath piece, way bigger and deeper. So that's, I think, a great reminder for me, you know, I'll probably just share with, with you and your community is just like, yeah, don't take every, anything for granted, but like, don't forget to celebrate the small wins because they matter. Yeah. That's such an important reminder. And you know, she sounds like an amazing person for sure. I know when we talked yes. and you said she's beaten the odds multiple times and just being a positive person and inspiring and just, um, it's a good reminder. Cause I think most of us are like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're all going to die one day, but, but are, are we really thinking about the mortality and like how we really don't know tomorrow's not promised yeah. just cause we're a certain age. I mean, every single day, like accidents happen, things happen. Yeah. Right. So we've got to have that constant reminder so everyone listening, hopefully like they're getting the powerful nature of this message of like truly being present, being grateful, taking time to celebrate the wins while still remembering your bigger vision and mission and purpose and like planning for the future, but also living for today, you know? Yeah. So that's always a good reminder for all of us. So, so I really appreciate you sharing that message today. Really yeah. powerful. My pleasure, man. It's been great. Awesome, man. Well, I've really enjoyed this conversation. What are your big goals for the year? Big focuses? I know you said the content, the podcast, yeah. like, do you have anything set in stone? Ones. Yeah. The, the two big ones are, yes, we're going to be launching a, a blog here. Probably, I don't know exactly the date, but we're going to say like by February 1st and like cool. ideally to um, the, the beginning pieces of the, the podcast too. I'd like to have a, a start date of of uh, February 1st too. So th those are the Perfect. two big things. Yeah. Like that, th those are the two main things to be completely honest with you. And then like being able to visit family. Um, yeah. All like our family, both sides are just spread out all over the place. And um, Corey's got a grandmother who's uh, she's turning 93 this year. And um, so we want to, you know, since we've moved out to Denver, she's, you know, we've been able to, to see her at least once a year. And so that's, that's, that's kind of a must, a must do, um, yeah. just for our own, like, good. you just never know. You never know. So we want to make sure we, we see as much family as we can this year. Awesome. And that's a perfect excuse to, uh, take a van and make exactly. the podcast, do some content, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can make it, it a business trip for sure. And just write off some of the expenses and the mileage. And that's the exact same reason we went to go visit some family of my wife's in El Paso over the Christmas holiday. Yes. It was just like, ah, we don't really want to go to El Paso. We like Denver. We'd rather go hiking or skiing, but her grandparents are there and they're, they're not getting any younger. And just that, that message of like, you never know. Like I have none of my grandparents are alive. They've yeah. all passed away. So she still has hers, like make the most of that and go talk yeah. to them. Don't be like me where I just threw Legos at my grandpa when he was sleeping. And I remember he got really mad when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> those types of things. I didn't actually have conversations and enjoy those yeah. moments. And now I'm like, man, I wish I could ask him this and that. 
instead yeah. of just being a little demon child, you know? So yeah. no, can very really powerful. But um, awesome. where can people go to learn more about what you guys are up to, to follow your journey? Yeah. I'd be happy to link the the website link in the show notes as well. I yeah, appreciate that, man. Yeah, Instagram is probably the easiest one. It's just at Vandemic Camper Vans. Um, and then we try to do van build tours on YouTube. It just You can uh, look up cool. Vandemic Camper Vans. And then our website is just www.vandemiccampervans.com. Perfect. It. You guys got the handles on all the platforms. So that's, that's mm-hmm. helpful too, because sometimes you got to add different numbers and underscores <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> Try to keep it simple. Yeah, I love it. Well, Rick, thank you once again for your time, my friend. And I'll let you know as soon as this goes live. Amazing story, amazing message. And just a lot of your story resonates with me too, because like, I feel like you are proving that you don't have to have it all planned. You don't have to have it all figured out. You can sort of go with the flow and things will click as long as you're intentional and taking action. So thanks once again. Appreciate you. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Thank you, man.